my name is Henrik Almgren. This is Internet Talk Radio from the west coast of Sweden. And uh, we are available worldwide over the internet at redicecreations.com. Uh, big thanks to Christopher Morse from creativecosmos.org for being with us last week, uh, taking the pulse on the cosmic jugular. And if you missed that show or any other of our previous programs, just head on over to our archives at redicecreations.com and uh, you'll find all of our programs there for you. Today we have Gary A. David with us and uh, we're going to talk about his book The Orion Zone and uh, we'll get to some very interesting information about the Hopi Indians, the Arizona Orion correlation and uh, lots more. So stay tuned and uh, enjoy the program. Today we have Gary A. David with us on the line. He is the author of The Orion Zone, Ancient Star Cities of the American Southwest. And uh, this is going to be a fascinating program. Uh, Gary has picked up on a lot of interesting material, I think, uh, in his research. And I recently posted two excellent articles by Gary on my website, which is redicecreations.com. Uh, one of those was entitled Along the 33rd Parallel, A Global Mystery Circle, and uh, the other one was Phoenix, Masonic Metropolis in the Valley of the Sun. And uh, we'll certainly talk more about those later on, but I thought we could begin to talk about Gary's book, about his research, and uh, maybe a little bit about him. So let's bring on our guest and get the show started. So welcome to Red Ice Radio, Gary, and thank you for spending some time with us today. Thank you, Henrik. Uh, good to be here. Yeah, it's it's excellent to have you here, and I've been looking forward to, to this show. And uh, to to start things off here, why don't you tell, if you want to, tell us a little bit about yourself, and you know when you when did you first start researching this kind of information, so to speak? Um, I've been working on this book. I worked on it for about seven years, and uh, I moved down from uh, South Dakota, uh, where I had uh, before that time I'd been researching the Lakota Sioux. Um, and the, the rituals up there, and it's. Uh, I came down to the Southwest. Uh, I, I've been here about uh, 12 years now, and um, but back in 1997, I started to, uh, to get the idea uh, for this book. Um, basically, I had been going up to the Hopi Reservation, which is about a four-hour drive from from my house, mm. um, and I started to. Uh, to uh, attend some of the Kachina dances up up in that uh, on the on the reservation, and uh, uh, seeing some of the rituals that the, the Hopi were doing up there, just an amazing uh, uh, ritual cycle that they have um, um, all year long, and um, mm -hmm. uh, it's a very elaborate system that they have uh, ritually, and uh, some of these rituals are open to the, to the public, and uh, so you you go up to the, the Reservation and just kind of watch these. Uh, well, the the Kachina dances are, are really fascinating. Mm -hmm. They um, they begin in in the uh, springtime and run through uh, just after the uh, summer solstice. Uh, they end around uh, July. And the Kachinas. Uh, some of your listeners might be familiar with the Kachina dolls that uh, yeah 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 that um, the, the Hopi carve yeah and and these uh, these uh, are representations of of spirit messengers hmm. um, the Hopi have uh, hundreds and hundreds of different types of kachinas and um, they perform dances in in honor of these kachinas and um, they they don um, costumes and masks of just uh, bizarre sorts of masks <laughs> of different sorts um, they're yeah. um, um, they, 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 they kind of look like uh, boxes on top of each other right yeah boxes or some some are round, or some are cylindrical, and they're they're uh, brightly painted in different fashions and with uh, different symbology. Mm. Uh, it's just amazing kind of a uh, 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 sensory experience if <laughs> you can ever get up to to the reservation and, and see one of these dances. Yeah, and they they dance all day long um, under the desert sun. Uh, basically, um, the dance is. Uh, it's for um, to bring rain, rainfall, of course, in the desert is mm -hmm. very important for uh, growth and and uh, fertility, general fertility and and well-being of the people. So um, I, I began to to go up to uh, the reservation and well, and watch these dances, 
and um, I was I was driving in northern Arizona and um, to, to go to one of these dances and um, I looked off to the north and uh, there are three primary mesas that the Hopi live on um, the villages are scattered across these three primary mesas that are in a line okay and um, I had just finished reading uh, The Orion Mystery by uh, Robert Bouval and yeah. Adrian Gilbert. Yeah. And, um, of course, um, your listeners probably will be familiar with the, uh, the Orion correlation that they, that they um, um, posited in, in that book, that the, um, the, the pyramids at Giza mm. reflect the, the belt of Orion. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I was just kind of gazing up at these three mesas in the distance, and I thought, well, maybe... Maybe this is another Orion correlation <laughs> here in uh, here in Arizona. Mm. So I put that in the back of my mind, and when I got home, I got out I got out the maps and I got out the sky charts and uh, compared them. And uh, what I uh, what I found just astonished me. It was uh, there was uh, a village or ruined site that corresponded to, corresponded to every major star in the, the constellation Orion. Mm. And um, it, it was just an amazing uh, exact uh, correlation between uh, the sky and the earth. <laughs> and um, that, that set me on, uh, on this journey, which, which lasted about seven years. <laughs> I began to, to go deeper and deeper into, uh, into the, uh, the researching the Hopi rituals mm -hmm. and... Uh, and um, researching different um, cultures that were influenced by Orion, and it seems like Orion is, is kind of a worldwide phenomenon. Yeah, it does. There are different uh, Orion correlations across the globe. Hmm. Interesting. So, uh, uh, yeah, t tell us more more about you know the, the your book and and kind of I guess your main thesis. I guess uh, so. This all started, as you say, of course, with with the, with the Hopi, but. Uh, uh, of course, you developed this theory, I guess, and, and did you apply it to, to many other cultures around the world? Oh, sure, yeah. Um, the, the, I, I wanted to start with the Hopi, and the first part of the book deals with the Hopi and uh, their, uh, the celestial uh, um, rituals that they perform. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, the Orion correlation is one of the, uh, the timers of the, of the rituals. For instance, during the winter solstice ceremony, um, the Hopi um, perform a ritual inside a kiva, which is a subterranean uh, a prayer chamber. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, there's a, a hatchway up above, and there's a ladder that sticks up through this hatchway. And um, they they time this uh, particular ritual when they when they see the constellation Orion overhead in the hatchway mm -hmm. uh, above them. So, you know, Orion was probably the most important constellation for the Hopi and, and continues to, uh, to be so because, you know, the Hopi are not a, a lost uh, people. They're still living up on the mesas. Uh, yeah. Um, they've, they've been there for uh, a thousand years or so, and, uh, and um, they still perform these rituals. Hmm. So... Um I mean, the obvious question here is, uh, w what is the connection with, with Orion? I mean, is is there a story uh, or a legend that, uh, residing within the hope is too that uh, you know, quite kind of the quote gods came from Orion, or w what's the connection here? Well, um, the 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 main connection has to do with a god named Masau. Masau was the was the god of the underworld, the god of this earth. Uh, and the god of death, and the Sao, um was uh, there at the beginning when when the Hopi were first making the the migrations across the desert, and they would uh, they would go to certain areas and uh, establish a village, and live there for a time, and then uh, the Hopi would uh, abandon the village and move on to another place and and, and build another uh, village, and the Sao was more or less directing. Um, the the migrations across the desert, hmm. and th these migrations took um, m uh, many centuries uh, to complete. So uh, this this is a long ongoing process. Hmm. Um, Masao is an interesting figure uh, because um, 
Um, he's uh, described as having very lo- uh, round uh, eyes, mm-hmm. uh, very round, large mouth, and the head is is um, is very very large and kind of bulbous, and and they they describe it as.